Hello everyone, Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be working with the new Caribbean map stamp, stencil, and die combo. So this is sold as a set. You can buy them separately if you want, but I designed them to go together to make really cool, almost like pirate treasure maps with, but you can also just make regular Caribbean map masculine cards, which is what I'll be doing today. I'm going to start by taking the scroll from the die set. This is an A7 die, so I have an A7 top folding card base here. I want this to be a shaped card, so I am overhanging the scroll at the top where that score line is, and that will be the hinges that will open and close my top folding card. Now if I were to do this again, I would make it side folding instead because as you can see, the left side of the scroll is a lot more substantial than these two tiny pieces at the top. But I know this card is going to be going on a poster board for my craft shows, so it didn't really affect me. But if I were you, I would do side folding instead. So the die includes this beautiful layered compass. And I'm just going to paper piece that together. I did decide to do all the details on this compass. So the main base I cut from a yellow gold cardstock. The second layer is navy. The actual star of the compass is brown. And then there's a few little gold accents that I'm going to add. The die even includes the little arrow um, for the compass that points in the direction you want it to go. And I thought it would be cute to place a brad where that arrow is so that it could actually spin. For this card, I just glued it down, but that's a cute idea. Before I glue the star, I'm going to add this gold ring. And then there's some tiny little details that creates the northeast, southeast, northwest, southwest arrows that I also cut from gold. The die also includes a feather pen or a fountain pen that I'm going to paper piece. And even the little details on the scroll that show the paper rolling up, you can make those papers slightly darker to give the actual scroll some dimension. So I did cut those out. The die even includes the letters N, E, S, and W obviously for north, east, south, and west. In the center of this compass, I'm going to add a black pearl, and I'm also going to add the arrow pointing north. And I think this compass is such a beautiful image. It would look nice on an A2 card as well as more of like a vocal point. And if you haven't seen the full set sale collection, I encourage you guys to check out my last video. It's a product showcase reveal where I show everything from the new launch and a ton of card samples. And I'm very happy to report that this collection by far was the best launch I've ever had. I ordered about the same amount of product I typically order for my launches and I've never sold out. I mean, I have sold out the first weekend of a launch, but it's usually just one or two products. This collection was so well received that several products, including our new pop-up deluxe bundle or kit, sold out on Saturday night. And I'm just completely blown away and stunned by the amount of orders that we received. I just can't believe it, honestly. I really do like this collection, but I wasn't sure how well it would be taken given that it is a more masculine style but i think that's exactly why it's so popular it's because this industry unfortunately doesn't have a lot of masculine images and i'm not saying that this that all guys have to like this particular style i know some guys like flowers and stuff but when it comes to more elegant i guess nautical summer themes there's not that much to choose from so I'm super happy that you guys love this collection as much as I do. So I am now pulling in the stamp and stencil. I stamped the Caribbean map onto the scroll with VersaFine Onyx Black ink, and then I sprinkled clear embossing powder over that. And now I'm using the three layering stencil to color the map in. I am using Distress Oxide inks. You'll see I'm going to switch for my other cards to Distress ink. As you can see, the oxide has some pigment into in it, and that is covering 
the words on like Cuba and Haiti. I am going to use a baby wipe to wipe off that excess ink, but it still kind of covers it. So definitely use dye ink to avoid that. And also the clear embossing powder did help to wipe off the excess ink. So that's also a tip. For the boats, there are some tiny little boats drawn into the map. I colored the bases of the boats with red ink and then there's even some small whales drawn into the map i used a dark blue ink for that here i'm going in with that baby wipe to wipe off any excess ink on the words and then for the second layer of the map this this colors the sails of the boats the little compass in the bottom left corner and then also the banner that on the scroll didn't stamp out because it's a little bit smaller, but you'll see in my next card, you'll see that banner. So for the sails in the boat, I'm using a white pigment ink, and I didn't bother to color the compass because I plan on putting my sentiment there. The third stencil is really cool because it creates the longitude and latitude lines on the map. This, you know, this last stencil is completely optional. It does make it a little more busy, but it, truly makes it look like a map so i went with a lighter brown ink so that it didn't distract from the black stamping but i think that added a lot of nice interest and i decided to put my sentiment where that compass is on the stencil and those longitude and latitude lines are i guess pointing from that compass so it really draws your eye into the sentiment i'm going to glue my compass to the right side of this card I'm also going to add the northeast, south, and west. I did triple layer these letters so that it's around the same dimension as the actual compass because that compass has so many detailed layers to it. I'm also going to pop up the sentiment just with some scrap pieces of black cardstock that I have on my table. And that's just so that everything is going to be nice and even. And right above that sentiment, I'm going to add the fountain pen. I believe this sentiment was white heat embossed on black cardstock, and it's from the new My Guiding Light 6x8 stamp set. So here I have that base that I created using the scroll die that I cut from an A7 card base. I'm going to add a ton of ATG tape to this so that it sticks very nicely. And then I'll just attach my craft scroll right on top. And here you can see that it's only attached on that left top side. So if I were to do this again, I'd make it a side folding card. I did add some navy blue pearls to this and that finishes off my first card. So the reason I am starting my video, I guess, series on this collection with the map is because this is like the only bundle I still have available for purchase right away. The uh, pop-up stand nautical bundle sold out and then the deluxe card kit sold out so they are under pre-order if you do want to purchase one I will say that the deluxe card kit I have very limited quantities of I'm only restocking about 25 kits and I believe already 10 of those have sold so there's not even any guarantees by the time this video goes up that they will be available but I will have the pre-order for that kit linked below if you want to snag one, if they're still available. Now the map bundle is also pretty low in quantity, and I just think this set is so cool, not only for card making, but also for scrapbooking. So yes, I apologize if you weren't able to grab your favorite items this weekend. Like I said, I just was not expecting the amount of orders that we received. So it's very exciting and I'm working very hard to ship out orders quickly and get those um, items that sold out restocked as soon as I can. So you can see I went ahead and stamped out the Caribbean map on craft card stock again. I'm not going to cut this one from the scroll. I wanted to showcase the full map on an A7 card. So here you can see the actual Caribbean banner on the top right corner that cuts off if you use the scroll. So I wanted to keep that in because it is a really nice detail on the stamp. And I am very loosely coloring the edges and around these land pieces with blue distress ink. I will, I, I do have the inks on camera, but I do like using dye inks over this stamp because as you can see, it's not covering 
the cuba and the little words that are drawn into the stamp and i'm being very loose with my inking here i know for this card i want it to be more of a background stamp as opposed to a focal point like i did on the last card so i am very quickly going over the stencils Again, the bottoms of the boats I am going in with red ink, also the banner, and I believe the compass I will also go over with red. The whales I am using chip sapphire ink. There's a whale on the top right corner and then also on the bottom left. I think those little tiny illustrations are what makes this map super cute. Then here's the second layer again, this colors the sails of the boat, the second layer of the compass, and then the details on the banner on the top right. So I'm going in with fired brick for the second layer of the um, banner, chip sapphire for the second layer of the compass, and then instead of white on the sails, I'm going to use like an orangey color and here's where I decide that the blue ink that I wanted to look like the ocean just wasn't standing out on that craft cardstock. So I thought I would try stamping the map on light blue cardstock so that will already create the quote unquote ocean of my card. And then I'll just go over all the stenciled elements with the same inks I used on that craft card that I just showed. So the land is peeled paint, the whales are chipped sapphire, the banner I think is festive berries and fired brick. On the boats for this card, I guess I went with a brownish orange color for the bottom of the boats. I think that is wild honey. This is festive berries on the banner and on the compass. And then for the second layer, I'm going to do the fired brick on the banner. I'm going to pull in that white pigment ink for the sails again. I'm not sure why that cut off, but <laughs> I did white pigment ink for the sails and I think the chip sapphire for the second layer of the compass. And then here's that third stencil. I'm going to use vintage photo distress ink to create the longitude and latitude lines. Again, this third stencil is completely optional but i think that's what really makes this look like a vintage almost like an atlas style design and it really shows up against this light blue background and i just think that is the coolest background ever and it would look so cute on maybe caribbean cruise scrapbook layouts. I might have to do a video scrapbooking with this collection. I haven't done it in years, but I can't stop thinking about scrapbook layouts with a lot of these products. So here I'm pulling back that uh, craft and this time I'm using walnut stain for the third layer stencil. Since that paper is a little darker, I want these lines to be darker. So originally I was not going to do the light blue background, but I had this idea of doing the blue ocean and you here you can see it on the darker craft background, but it's a little more splotchy because I wasn't masking off anything. I was doing it a little bit lazily, but you're going to see the end result looks very cool because it is more like a background, whereas this one is more of a focal point. I am going to go around the edges of both of these maps with vintage photo for the blue and then walnut stain for the craft. And to finish these cards off, I'm going to take some hot foil ropes that I created using this nautical badge hot foil set. I'm just going to use that circle rope from that set. And then from the set sail stamp set, I'm going to use that beautiful Father's Day uh, sentiment. I did gold heat emboss it on cream cardstock and just so that it blends in a little more with the background I did go over it with vintage photo distress ink and Desiree if you're watching I understand now why you use that ink so often it's because it instantly vintage fies any card you're making I love it so I am going to stack up both the rope frame and the sentiment with several die cuts behind it. I think I did two heavyweight die cuts. 
And that's just going to lift it off the pretty busy background, but as you can see, it stands out very nicely. I'm going to accent the inside of the circle with these new sand colored pearls. They're super pretty. And that's going to finish off the vintage map. And I absolutely love the sentiment on this card. It says, A father is neither an anchor to hold us back, nor a sail to take us there, but rather a guiding light whose love shows us the way. Very beautiful. And here I have my A7 card base. I'm going back and forth on going with a black mat or the cream mat. I think the cream kind of brightens the card a bit and matches the sentiment. So I went with the cream. On the blue background, I will go with the black mat. And you can definitely make this more of a almost one layer card by leaving everything flat. But that com completes the second design. For my blue background, which as you can see, it's just completely different even though it is the same stamp and both of them do look vintage just in a different way. On this one, I'm going to go with a red hot foil rope circle frame with a lighthouse in the middle of it. Here I have my die cuts that I am layering up behind for a bit of dimension. I have to cut up the lighthouse so that it's even with the rope where that lighthouse overlaps. But I just love this pop of red. It matches the red on the banner in the background. And while it's a super busy card, my eye goes straight towards that circle with the lighthouse in it. I'm going to accent the inside of this circle with some of our new red crystal gems. These are slightly different from some other gems that we've brought out. They're a little more clear and just really pretty. All right, so like I said, this one I'm going to mat with the black. I feel like the black stamping is more pronounced on this design. So the black just draws your eye right in. And I am very happy with how these two cards turned out. They're probably my favorite out of the five. And I will have everything I used listed down in the video description if you'd like to check that out. All right, so now we're going to move on to our fourth card design. And I'm going to make another shaped scroll, but this time I'm going to make a vertical orientation instead of horizontal. So I wanted to show you that you can use the scroll without the map. It's a beautiful die set as a base for any design. And I'm going to pull in some of the images from our new Guiding Light stamp set. I'm going to use the Pirate Ship and the Compass. I'm going to show you how I colored just the Pirate Ship. I am using colored pencils here, so it took longer than I typically color because I always go for my Copic markers. But again, I'm going with that like brownish map vintage style, so I didn't want a stark white border when I use the coordinating dies to cut these out. So I wanted to start with a craft base. And for me, I prefer pencils on craft over Copics just because I can brighten things up with my pencils. You can see here on the sails of the boat, I am using a white pencil and that's really brightening them up. And I can't necessarily do that with my Copic markers. So when I use my pencils, it does take longer because I go over the image multiple times with my uh, pencils to get a smoother blend. I'm also using a little blender pencil that Prismacolor sells that is nice for blending pencils if you don't want to go over the same image over and over again. So I could have probably colored this five or six times to get a perfect blend, but instead I only went over it two or three times and then used that blender pencil to really mix those colors together. And one thing I regret about this pirate ship is coloring the bottom part of it navy blue because the waves that I'm going to put behind this ship is navy blue. So it kind of blends in with the background. I wish I made the entire bottom part of the pirate ship brown, but 
I think it still looks okay. And here you can see I am going back and forth with my three colors two or three times to get that nice seamless blend. I do like with color pencils, it gives you a more artsy look. It's not as clean as Copic markers, which I think in this particular style, it kind of lends itself nicely to. So here you can see I'm now going in with the brown. I was trying to go for like a painted pirate ship look, but in the end, I think it would have been better if the whole thing was brown. I'm going to use the same colors on the compass over to the right and I actually colored this compass the same way as the die cut compass I made for my first card. So I went with navy blue, a yellowish gold color, and brown. And this is actually the same compass that is the die cut one. It's just drawn with more detail in it. There is some shading lines on both the boat well, I guess with all of my stamps, there's shading lines, so if you're not much of a colorist, it gives you a good idea of where to add your shadows. All right, so that finishes off the pirate ship. Just because this video is already like 40 minutes long, I skipped the compass, but here it is completely colored. I'll use the coordinating dies to cut those out. Here I have my scroll. I die cut it once from craft cardstock and then I'm going to cut just the bottom part of it from navy blue. And I want the bottom to look like waves. So I'm taking a slimline cloud border die from my stash. I actually don't have any waves, but I knew if I flip the die upside down, it kind of creates the wave texture that I want. So that is what I'm doing here. I have another shade of navy that is gonna go in front. I end up not really liking the two colors combined, so I end up cutting this second layer from the same navy as the last one I did. But now that I'm layering it on top, I do kind of like the, I guess, contrast. Here I'm laying out my card design. I want my pirate ship to go on the bottom right and my compass to go at the top. And I think here is where I decide that I want both my waves to be the same color. I think I wanted that pirate ship to stand out more and that's the reason why I did it. But now, again, I'm going to take my vintage photo distress inks, actually, sorry, this is walnut stain, going over the edges of the craft scroll. And as you can see, with just a couple seconds, this really vintage vintage pies the card. I absolutely love it. And I'm very happy that I went with the stamped images on a light brown beige color as opposed to white. It just blends in very nicely with this style card. All right, so once again, I have to layer up my stamped images to pop them off the background. This is not necessary. You can also use foam tape but I like that this is so clean and I know that it's gonna go through the mail perfectly because everything is even. So here's the waves. This bottom wave that I'm gluing, I did go over the bottom with black soot ink so that there's a little more contrast to it. I felt like because they're the same color, my pirate ship stood out a bit more. So I'm also going to pop that up with two heavyweight die cuts behind it. And the die even cuts out the inner details of the boat, which is nice. And both the new image stamp sets from the release have nice large size images. So they fill an A7 card very nicely. I went with the sentiment that says, even through the toughest of storms, uh, you guide me through the darkness. So there's honestly, the sentiments in the stamps are beautiful. They work for sympathy cards, uh, perfect for someone who's maybe going through something that you want to send some encouragement to. Sentiments that I don't normally see very often. All right, so to embellish this card, I'm going to use a mix of navy pearls and then those sand pearls again. And this little seashell is a gift you can receive if you buy six or more embellishment mixes with scrappy tails. It's a nice little holder for your 
uh, gems or your embellishment mixes. So here I added some navy pearls and then I'll just add some of these sand colored pearls. I'm also going to add one to the center of the compass at the top. And again, I'm going to make this a shaped card. So I'm going to take that scroll die again. This time I'm lining up the left side of the scroll over the score line to create a vertical side folding card. And as you can see, this one's a lot more substantial than the first one. And I like that with this die, you can do either orientation and it looks great both ways. And with that Caribbean map, I think it would be cute to do a little trail of notches with a red X and make it look like a treasure map. But here is my fourth card design. And for my last card, I went with a little bit of a different style. It's still a little bit vintagey because I did go over the edges with vintage photo, but it's a lot more brighter than the first four designs that I made. So I am going to pull in our new message in a bottle die set along with our new waves six by six stencil. I did want to point out that the waves on the stencil match the waves on the message in a bottle die set. That's why I put them together in the regular card kit. Um, but for this card, I'm actually just going to use the sand and the little scroll and then a few little details for inside my bottle. You can see I die cut the bottle twice from cream cardstock and once from acetate. I wanted this to look like a glass bottle. The die also includes the cork for the top, the sand. To create the water in the background, I die cut the bottom of the bottle from light blue cardstock and then I use that cloud slimline border to create the wave pattern. The die even has that cute little rope that hangs off the top of the bottle with that anchor charm. I added the scroll just towards the left center of the bottle and I thought it would be fun to add some of these gold seashell embellishments. These are included in the deluxe card kit but you can also buy them separately. Before I glued my acetate to the clear bottle, I, as you can see, added all of my die cuts on top of the acetate so that I could add glue behind those solid die cuts to glue onto my cream bottle so that you wouldn't see any glue on the acetate. I did kind of have to lift up the acetate to go over the edges of the bottle with my vintage photo distress ink. So definitely do that before gluing that down. And then I added another cream bottle behind just to add a little more dimension. On my scroll, I die cut that from light blue cardstock and I'm going to go over the stencil with Mermaid Lagoon Distress Oxide ink and I believe Peacock Feathers. And I am being a little bit rough handed with this stencil. It is a pretty dainty one. There's a lot of cutouts. So definitely for my 10 card one kit video, I'm going to take my time. But I knew that the majority of this background was going to get covered by my bottle and my sentiment. So I'm very quickly and loosely going over the stencil with my inks. I do recommend using a side to side motion as opposed to a circle motion which is what I'm doing here. So you'll see when I peel this up it's a little bit smudgy but still very pretty. And having that light blue background makes the finished result a little softer. If I would have went with white I think it would have been a little bit too distracting and too stark. So you can see I went over each color twice to really darken that background and that was my cat. <laughs> Alright, so I'll remove that stencil. You can see there was one spot that just did not transfer any ink so I loosely went over that area again. My bottle is going to go to the left side and then I wanted some sand at the bottom of my scroll so I cut the bottom part of it from cream cardstock. I'm going to freehand cut a little sand hill from this and you guessed it I'm going to go around the edges with vintage photo distress ink 
And one thing I forgot to do was to go over the entire scroll with the vintage photo ink. So if I were to do this card again, I'd probably do that. And like I said, this bottle does come in the card kit and you can create a different scene inside the bottle because there's a cute little pirate ship also included. So definitely stay tuned for my 10 card one kit video. I'll show the paper piecing again a little bit slowed down because I know this video is a little bit fast because these cards took about an hour to two hours each to make. So all that tape that's overhanging was used to tape down my stencils, so I'm just going to remove those. And then I can start to build up my scene. For my sentiment, I'm pulling in this beautiful A7 rope frame cover plate die. I'm going to use the hope word, the shadow die, and then the little sentiment strips that are included from that set. And then from the A7 seashell cover plate, I'm going to use the individual seashells just to accent the bottom of my bottle. I cut the Hope Word from gold cardstock. I layered it up with heavyweight white die cuts to add some dimension. I cut the shadow die from that light beige cardstock. And then I cut the word strip from brown cardstock. And then I added a gold strip behind it so that those words would pop out more. Here I'm going to pop in the little tiny O's that pop out from the word strip die. I'm going to do that for the O's and then also the A. So this sentiment says, hope anchors the soul. Again, another nice encouraging sentiment. And then here are my seashells that I die cut from that cover plate. I have my sand dollar, which I cut from gray. And I'm going to add just a slight bit of dimension to these with my Copic markers. You can definitely use distress inks, but because these are so small, I thought that the markers would be easier to control where the ink goes. I will also add some shading to the scroll inside the bottle. And then I made this shell look like a zebra shell by offsetting the two shades of brown from the paper and from the marker. And then I cut the sea star from the same gold mirror cardstock to kind of transition the gold from the top to the bottom. And I think these seashells really finished off the card nicely. I love the slight hints of gold on this card. So now I can go ahead and commit and glue everything down. I added my sand to the bottom of the scroll, then my bottle. I'll tuck in my little sand dollar behind the bottle. I do wish I popped up some of these shells, but at this point, I didn't have much time left, so I went ahead and just created a cluster of three there. And then I'll go ahead and glue my sentiment to the top. This A7 rope cover plate also includes the word dies thoughts and prayers. So this would also be a very pretty sympathy card. And I absolutely love how this scene turned out. The scroll really creates a nice backdrop and kind of switches up your regular rectangle scene design. So here I'm pulling in those tiny gold embellishments to fill in the bottom part of the sand. I'll also add a few of these around the sentiment. This set of embellishments includes seashells, sea stars, um, palm trees, seahorses, just a bunch of cute nautical embellishments and they are meant for nail art but I thought that they'd be cute to accent cards with and also for shaker cards. So I did remember to add vintage photo around the edge of my card base. I don't know why I didn't go around the edge of the scroll but I still think this has that vintage look to it. And I just glued the scroll right onto the A7 card base. Again, you can make this a shaped card like I did on the other two designs, but I kind of like that cream poking through the sides. So that finishes off all five of my cards today. Again, I will have everything linked down below. I do not have a lot of these map bundle sets left. 
So here I'm going to pull in the rest of the cards that I made. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I will have a coordinating blog for these cards with close-up photos posted tomorrow. It's already pretty late today. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys had a nice weekend and a great rest of your week. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.